thanks for coming along. Today we're going to visit Angel Island, the largest island in San Francisco Bay at about 1.2 square miles. Angel Island has been used for a variety of purposes over the years. It's been military bases, it's been a quarantine station, it's been an immigration inspection and detention facility, and during World War II, it even housed prisoners of war. However, today, with the exception of a very small piece, which is an active U.S. Coast Guard station, the entire rest of the island is a California State Park. The only access to the island is by ferry or by private boat, although I suppose if you are really hardy, you could swim here. We're arriving on an unusually warm December day on a ferry from San Francisco. Because December is the off-season, the ferry arrives from San Francisco twice a day, once in the morning about 10 o'clock, and then it will come back in the afternoon about 4 o'clock to pick us back up, so we'll have the entire day to spend on the island. Well, we've disembarked, and there goes the ferry, leaving us behind to spend the day on Angel Island. Don't worry, it'll be back about 4 o'clock to pick us up. If you're interested in seeing the ferry rides to and from the island, those are separate videos on my channel, so you can look for those. You can see here at Ayala Cove there are a number of facilities including a nice large picnic area. There are also a couple of restaurants here. We're here in the off season so only one of the restaurants was open and it's only open for limited hours. Both restaurants are open in the summer for longer hours. The food is good, I wouldn't say it's gourmet, but it's not bad. Angel Island is a big island with roads and a network of trails, uh, lots of hiking available, including all the way up to the highest point on the island, which is Mount Caroline Livermore at 788 feet, if you're up for that. This is a view of Mount Livermore taken from the video of the ferry ride on the way to the island, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. There are no private motorized vehicles allowed on the island. However, you can bring your bike and you can also rent bikes. There are group tours by Segway and some sort of electric bikes. If it's your first time on the island, I highly recommend taking one of these open air tram tours. They go around the outer perimeter of the island and they take about an hour. And they're a good way to get a sense of the island and what sort of things you might want to come back and visit. If you want to, you can also get off anywhere along the tour and explore and then walk back. So that's the first thing we're going to do here. We're going to take one of these tram tours around the island. But before we can get going, we've got to make kind of a tight U-turn here with the tire just inches from the edge of this ledge. We get a little bit of spotting help from one of the passengers, and with that help, we make it by without going over the edge. And we're on our way. Okay, we're taking a tram ride here, and if you know me, then you know. If there's a tram ride, then we've got to have a tram lapse. And further, the tram lapse has got to be instrumented. So let's begin by first adding some instrumentation and switching to some suitable tram lapse music. Don't worry though, during this tram lapse we'll be stopping or slowing down at about uh, 13 different points of interest. All right, it's time to speed it up and do a little bit of lapsing until our first point of interest.
We're now arriving at our first stop, which is Point Ione. Off to the left in the distance, you can see a little bit of the Golden Gate Bridge. The point directly in front of us is Point Ione. And across the bay, you can see the houses of Sausalito. To the right is the town of Belvedere on the island of Belvedere, known for its views. As you might guess, it's a rather expensive area. It only has a population of around 2,000, and there are no businesses in Belvedere. It's entirely residential. The narrow channel that separates us from the mainland here is known as Raccoon Strait. Across Raccoon Strait, you can see the docks where the ferries land. A little bit behind the docks is the narrow spit of land that connects Belvedere with Tiburon. And just behind that, you can see a little bit of Richardson Bay. And then beyond Richardson Bay is Mount Tamalpais, known to everybody in the Bay Area as Mount Tam. Further to the right is the town of Tiburon on the Tiburon Peninsula. The city of Tiburon has a population of around 9,000. And unlike its neighbor Belvedere, Tiburon does have businesses. It has two hotels, it has a weekly newspaper, it has quite a few restaurants, boutiques, and small shops. We're approaching Camp Reynolds, also known as the West Garrison because it's on the west side of the island. This red building here was a hospital. It was used for training army surgeons and it was completed in 1904. Here's a first overview of our next stop, which is Camp Reynolds. Here we are at Camp Reynolds. Interesting thing about Camp Reynolds, it contains the largest collection of wood-framed Civil War buildings left in the United States. That's right, you would think that would be in the south somewhere, but no, it's right here in the San Francisco Bay. The largest collection of wood-framed Civil War buildings that's still left. The yellow building with red trim is the officer's quarters. Three families shared that house. Everybody got their own rooms at the top and they shared the lower level. The buildings going down towards the water were for soldiers and their families. And it went according to rank with the higher ranks getting the houses higher up. So if someone came onto the island with a higher rank, they'd all have to shift down. And the lowest ranks would have to pitch their tents down by the water. All these buildings were built in the 1860s. Some of them were built over on Yerba Buena Island and hauled over here and then hauled up the hill by mules. Others were brought over in pieces on a barge and then assembled over here. Nobody lives here now. Park personnel do live elsewhere on the island, but nobody lives here. However, some Bay Area schools do come once in a while and spend the night. The large grassy area with the flagpole is the parade ground. The building down by the water I've heard conflicting stories about. Some places seem to indicate that it was a hospital, others that it was a place for storing ammunition and explosives. So it's not clear to me actually which that was, a hospital or an ammunition dump. 
And by the way, the white restrooms off to the left were added as part of the park. They were not there during the Civil War era, obviously. Our next stop is a place called Battery Ledyard. It has some really great views of the bay, sweeping views from the Bay Bridge, City of San Francisco, over to the Golden Gate Bridge, and all the way over to Marin. Battery Ledyard was the site of one of the three artillery batteries that were built on the island after the Spanish-American War. I've seen various accounts of when it was started and when it was completed, different dates. According to the tour guide on this trip, it was completed in 1904, and it was declared obsolete in 1909, so it only lasted for five years as an active military installation. By the way, no military installation on Angel Island has ever actively been involved in any battles. No military installation on Angel Island has ever fired a shot in anger, as they say. There are some really great views of the Golden Gate Bridge from over here. You'll notice the two rectangular things hanging on the side of the bridge. Those are platforms used by the painters and maintenance people to work on the bridge. Painting of the bridge is a continuous process, ongoing all year, it never ends. Hey, you know what? Why don't we take a minute and teleport over to the Golden Gate Bridge and see what it looks like from over there. And here's one of those platforms that the painters and maintenance people use. That would be an interesting job, I guess. Obviously, it might be kind of a problem if you had a fear of heights. And if you look out beyond the platform, you can see Angel Island. And I think where we've stopped at Battery Ledyard is right about here. So here we are, looking at ourselves from the bridge, and looking at ourselves from Angel Island, looking both directions. Alright, well that's enough of ourselves looking back at ourselves, so let's teleport back over to Angel Island and continue our tour. There you can see the western span of the Bay Bridge, officially known as the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge. The upper deck being westbound or inbound traffic, and the lower deck being for outbound or eastbound traffic. The eastern end of the western span is anchored at Yerba Buena Island right there. And then this is the eastern span of the Bay Bridge. And you can see the new eastern span in front with the single suspension tower, the tall white tower. And then behind it, the metalwork is the old eastern span, which is in the process of being torn down and will be gone eventually. Okay, time to leave Battery Ledyard and continue our journey. As we head away from Battery Ledyard, down below you can see a sandy beach. That's Pearl's Beach, named after James Pearl, who was a dairy farmer and a handyman, a civilian who lived on the island during the 1860s and worked for the army. His son, Fred Pearl, then worked for the army for about 40 years and was the last landowner on Angel Island.
ahead of us, up above on the hill, you can see an outcropping of rock with a greenish color. That is serpentine rock, and that's the official state rock of California. It became the official state rock of California in 1965, and California was the first state to designate a state rock. How about that? However, uh, there was a movement a few years ago to change that because apparently serpentine has asbestos in it and there was some senator that was worried about that. But I don't think it went anywhere because serpentine is still the official state rock. Serpentine was quarried here and this large structure that you see here is a rock crusher that was built in 1931 and it was used to crush the rock and sort gravel for the island's roads. Wildlife on the island includes snakes, salamanders, raccoons, and field voles, including a subspecies of mole found only on this island. I'm sure you'll be disappointed that we didn't see any moles on this tour. However, we did see some of the estimated 200 deer that reside on the island. Well, ho-hum, here's some more fantastic views of the Golden Gate Bridge, San Francisco, the Bay Bridge. You know, you almost get jaded on this island. There are so many fantastic views from every direction. This narrow point is Point Blunt. It contains an active U.S. Coast Guard station. It's the only part of the island that is not accessible to the general public. And beyond it, you can see the East Bay, the East Bay Hills, Berkeley, and Oakland. And also a very good view of the eastern span of the Bay Bridge with the new section in the foreground with the white suspension tower and in the background the metalwork of the old bridge which is in the process of being torn down. We're now entering Fort McDowell, also known as the East Garrison. 
It was named after General Irvin McDowell, who led the Union Army in the first Battle of Bull Run in the Civil War. The big building on the right is the barracks. When it was originally built, it was known as the 600-man barracks. And then later on, it became known as the 1,000-man barracks, as they squeezed in even more men during World War II. The grassy area in front of the barracks is where the parade ground was. The row of buildings on the left was the officers' quarters, known as Officers' Row. Park personnel and their families now live in some of these buildings. Most of the buildings here date between 1910 and 1912, and they were built using military prisoners from the army prison over on Alcatraz as labor. Although heavily used in World War I, the most heavy use of Fort McDowell was in World War II. It was an important point of debarkation and embarkation, and also quarantine. But the busiest period was when World War II ended. For example, in just the month of December 1945, 23,632 men returned through Fort McDowell. And during that month, the main mess hall served 310,000 meals. During World War II, more than 300,000 soldiers shipped to the Pacific Theater through Fort McDowell. Ahead, at the end of Officer's Row, is the Administration Building. Past the Administration Building is a newer yellow building on the left, which is the Chapel. This is open to the public and has become a romantic spot for weddings. Past the Chapel is the Hospital. Soldiers were examined here before they shipped out or when they returned. It was last used as the headquarters for the Nike Missile Command in the early 1960s. Yes, there were actually 12 Nike missiles here on Angel Island up until 1962 when they became obsolete and were removed. And that was the last time that Angel Island was ever used for military purposes. We've arrived at the former U.S. Immigration Station, nicknamed the Guardian of the Western Gate, also known as the Ellis Island of the West. Between 1910 and 1940, nearly one million immigrants from more than 80 countries passed through here. During World War II, it was a POW processing center for captured German and Japanese soldiers. Not a lot you can see from the road up here, so we'll just pause here for a minute. Really need to get down in there and explore to see it all. So we'll leave that for some other tour some other time. As we head up the hill here, you can see just a little bit more of the former immigration station off to the right through the fence. We're now approaching Point Campbell, which is the northernmost tip of Angel Island. 
In the distance is the Richmond-San Rafael Bridge, which is Interstate 580. The little island that you see there is actually in front of the bridge. It looks like the bridge might go to the island, but actually that island is in front of the bridge from our perspective. That's Red Rock Island. And the most interesting thing about that is that's the only privately owned island in San Francisco Bay. Not only that, but it's currently for sale at the time of this video. It was for sale for 10 million. The price has been lowered to 5 million. So you could buy your own island, about a six acre island in San Francisco Bay for only $5 million. And yet another interesting thing about this island is that the boundaries of three counties converge on this island, San Francisco, Marin, and Contra Costa counties. Two of the counties, San Francisco and Contra Costa, actually share part of the island. The city of Richmond and the city of San Francisco each have about half of the island. Now if you asked anyone on the street if San Francisco shares a common border with the city of Richmond over in the East Bay, they'd probably say you're crazy. But yes, they actually do share a common border on Red Rock Island. Part of the city of San Francisco is over on that island, a part of San Francisco that I've never been to. And here we are, right back where we started, at Ayala Cove. And this concludes our tram lapse tour of the island, my first ever tram lapse video. If we were feeling frisky and ambitious, we might go on a hike on one of the many trails around the island. But today, actually, I'm feeling kind of laid back, kind of lazy, so I think I'll just hang out here at Ayala Cove and relax for a bit. It's kind of nice that there's this idyllic, quiet place here to kind of relax and hang out. Only a ferry ride away from the hustle and bustle of the city of San Francisco. Since the only access to the island is by ferry or by private boat, there's no traffic on the island. It's nice and quiet that way. There aren't a lot of huge crowds coming and going, especially in the December off season that we're in now. So we'll just relax here a while until our ferry comes to take us back. This building is the visitor center. It houses a small museum on the ground floor. The museum is mostly photographs and posters about the history of the island. There isn't a lot in the way of artifacts in that sense of a museum, but it's still worth a visit. It's interesting to read about the history of the island and to contemplate what things were like years ago. There are other ferries that arrive and leave at various times during the day that go to other places, aside from the San Francisco ferry. I believe that this ferry here is coming from Tiburon. This is the docks and the waiting area where people wait to board the ferries. And off to the right are the public restrooms, important to point those out. You may be wondering about the workers who work on the island, the park rangers, the people who work in the restaurants and so on. A handful of them do live on the island, as we saw during the tram lapse tour, we saw some of the places they live in. A lot of them commute by boat. Some of them take a private boat that brings them over a little bit before opening time. A lot of them come over on the very same ferries that we do.
the ferries from San Francisco tend to be the earliest and the latest. So after this ferry leaves, it actually gets quite quiet around here at Ayala Cove. A little more peaceful, fewer people around. Not that there were many in this December off-season, but still it gets even quieter after the majority of the people leave. The only people left are those waiting to go back to San Francisco. I really do appreciate places like this. I can hop on Muni, take a bus over to the Embarcadero, take a ferry over to this island and hang out here in this nice, quiet, peaceful place. There was no driving involved. And then when I'm ready to leave, hop on the ferry, same thing, back on Muni, and I'm home. And it was a pleasant journey both ways, not involving any freeways or driving or traffic or any of that. So maybe we'll come back again some other time and look around some more. But right now it's time to head back to San Francisco. This is the ferry that will take us back to San Francisco, right on time. If you're interested in seeing the ferry ride back to San Francisco, that's a separate video elsewhere on my channel, and you can check that out if you like. Thanks for joining me on this trip to Angel Island, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next trip, wherever that may be.